on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a hot minute since my last video. Recently I had a job change that honestly got me pretty busy. A year ago this time I uploaded my first video to this channel. It was a day in the life of when I was still an associate, right? So it's been a year since that video and you know, I moved on to another real estate private equity firm. I guess now I just have a higher title than what I used to have. And so if you want to see what I used to do as a private equity associate, this link will be somewhere up here. You can see the video. I'll go through more of the differences in my day as a VP to an associate a little later in this video. My morning routine hasn't changed much. <laughs> Wake up, take a shower, drink some coffee, and get on with the rest of my day. Okay, so I'm gonna start getting ready for work. Um, we are all going back to the office now, full time. So obviously when everybody's there, you gotta dress up a little bit formal, right? But we're run by relatively younger people. So we're not, you know, super serious about our dress code. For those of you who are new to the channel, I spent my entire career so far in the field of finance. When I was an undergrad, I did two summers at a boutique investment bank as a summer analyst. After I graduated from undergrad, I started my full-time career at another boutique investment bank that focused on real estate transactions. I was an analyst there for about two and a half years and I moved on to the buy side where I was a private equity associate for about two years. Earlier this year, I left my role as a private equity associate and moved on to my current role as a private equity VP for another boutique real estate private equity firm. So what are really the differences between when I was an investment banking analyst, when I was a private equity associate, to now a private equity VP? Now keep in mind, I spent essentially my entire career with boutique smaller firms and I don't have any experience with bulge bracket banks or mega funds. So all of this is just my personal experience. Now looking back at every role that I had so far in my career, the amount of time that I spent per week working on the job is actually pretty similar in all of my roles. I would say on average, all three roles, I spent about anywhere between 60 to 70 hours a week on the job. One thing I noticed about all my jobs in the past is the position that I had previously always built upon the skill set that I needed for my next role. When I first started my career as an investment banker, essentially 80 to 90% of my time was spent underwriting. Either that means doing due diligence on new opportunities or doing the pitch decks and modeling of an existing live deal. When I transitioned into a private equity associate, I would say only half of my time was spent on underwriting. Now, since private equity firms take ownership of the companies that you're investing in, you have to spend essentially a good amount of time managing those businesses. So you pick up the skills that you learn from banking and underwriting, doing the deal analysis. The other half of the time, you're essentially spending to execute the business strategies that you laid out in your underwriting. Now, in my current role as a VP, a lot of my job now is providing high level guidance to the rest of my staff in terms of underwriting, in terms of asset management, in terms of executing business plans, and less of the actual underwriting and business execution work. Now, as a private equity VP, the biggest change from an associate is essentially what is called business development work. Essentially what that means is I'm essentially a relationship manager between my current firm and any of the partners that we potentially work with throughout all aspects of the business. For example, what that means is I'm the point of contact between us and our lending and banking partners. I'm the point of contact between us and any brokers or investment banks that are bringing us new deals. I'm the point of contact when it comes to managing the properties that we own and giving directions on how we should be managing these properties. Anything that's related to operating the business from a higher level, that is more my new updated responsibilities. I would say nowadays my time is kind of split a third on underwriting, a third on managing our properties, and a third on business development. As it was similar to when I was a private equity associate, the majority chunk of my work is still considered indoors or office work. Still, for most of the days, it's spent either taking meetings or doing office work like reading emails or updating documents. Even though some meetings are starting to become in person as the economy starts to open up, still, I would say the majority of my day is spent indoors in the office. With the nature of the real estate investment business, 
you have to visit your existing properties with physical inspections once in a while to see everything's going according to plan. And as well as when you need to make new acquisitions, you need to go out and see the actual properties before you buy it. My current firm is expanding pretty fast beyond our existing geographical scope, which is kind of focused in Southwest Ontario. Now we're looking at properties in, you know, west of Canada, in Vancouver, in Alberta, and we're looking down south in the U.S., anywhere in California, you know, L.A., we're looking at the East Coast in New York. So there's going to be a lot of traveling for me to go see the properties that are out there. All right, so it's about 12 p.m. Um, getting pretty hungry. Honestly, I'm trying to eat pretty healthy recently. So I'm going to go downstairs to the salad bar and see what they have. Move the more I'm progressing through my career, the more I realize the things that I wanted at the beginning of my career are very different than the things that I wanted later on in my career. When I was a student and landed my first investment banking internship, all I can think of at the time was grinding through the investment banking ladder as an analyst, an associate, VP, MD. When I started as a full-time investment banking analyst, it was really the first time that I had any sort of interaction with these senior management teams of large companies that were doing the transactions for. About a year and a half into investment banking, I kind of realized that I like to be involved in the decision-making process of running a company and operating businesses. It was at this point in my career where I realized that I need to look for an opportunity on the buy side. And when I eventually made the move to the buy side as a private equity associate, the asset management portion, as in running the companies that you're invested in, became one of my favorite parts as a private equity associate. But of course, as an associate, you're still more of a junior role where you don't get a say in the overall scheme of things. It was still more of my VPs and my managing directors who are actually making decisions for these projects and I was there to essentially execute on the plans that they set out. As an associate at the time, it was more up to me to coordinate the back office stuff to make sure that the senior VPs and the MDs actually had the correct information to make those decisions. As I became a VP of a private equity firm, it became more clear to me that I really enjoyed now I have the final say in a lot of business strategies where I saw my old VPs and my MDs make decisions based on certain scenarios and now I understand how to make these decisions myself for the business that we own. Pretty interesting that now I look back in my career, I'm more and more shifting now towards being entrepreneurial roles where I can make decisions versus back in the day where all I thought was to grind up the corporate ladder in investment banking. That's one thing I noticed about always working at smaller firms is the fact that there are less people in the decision making process makes your decisions and your words a lot more impactful in the overall process. At this point in my life, I really don't have a concrete goal and, you know, know where I'm going with my career over the next, say, five to 10 years. One thing I do know about myself is entrepreneurship is the path that I do see myself moving towards in the future. It really does feel like in my current role that I'm very satisfied with the work overall because I have the final say in terms of, you know, business strategies and it feels like I'm actually operating these investments that we own. If I had to end it off with some advice for you know new grads or students who are looking to go into investment banking is you really only figure out what you like when you don't like while working and it's tough to know before you step into the industry. I see a lot of kids burn out because they really are obsessed with the idea of breaking into investment banking and when they get there, you know, it's not what they like and you know, they kind of just are lost and they don't know what to do next. To me personally, at least it felt like I learned more about myself and what I wanted the more I worked and it really ended up being a lot different than I was originally expecting. It's about seven o'clock, got out of the office. Yeah, it's been pretty busy, so I'm just gonna go home, cook some dinner, probably go to the gym tonight. All right, done with the meal. Just cooking up the rest to bring to the office tomorrow. Um, yeah, it's about 9.30 right now. 
I'm probably just gonna take a quick nap. My gym normally closes at uh, 11, so I gotta go by 10. I don't know, I'm gonna lie on the couch and watch some TV for 30 minutes and head out to the gym. It's about 10 p.m. <laughs> Woke up from my 30 minute power nap that I take. You know, I like going to the gym around this time because I just ate dinner and had an hour to digest this, so I feel pretty strong going to the gym. Finally got home from the gym. It's about 11 p.m. Uh, and honestly, my nightly routine hasn't changed too much. I used to read a lot more sometime last year, but I kind of stopped reading. And instead, I've been listening to a lot more podcasts recently. Um, I don't listen to too many finance podcasts, actually. I've actually listened to more about like baseball, sports, hobby-related podcasts. I think for the rest of the night, I'm going to go to the balcony put on a podcast, chill for a little bit, and then head to bed. So it's about 11.30, almost turning 12, so it's about time for me to hit the bed. I mean, I've been sleeping pretty late recently, as late as, you know, 1 or 2 a.m. Most, mostly because I feel like I'm cheated during the day where I don't do enough for myself. It's a bad habit, but I'm trying to get used to it. Honestly, this channel has grown a lot faster than I ever thought it would be. So I appreciate everybody's support to watch these videos. Definitely leave any comments below and I'll try to answer, you know, any questions that you guys have about, you know, finance, uh, you know, recruiting, school, life. Feel free to leave a comment down below. And I know I always say I'm going to try to upload consistently, but I think my schedule honestly settled down now. So hopefully I can actually upload consistently. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.